I probably would be telling myself to explore my interests more, to take more risks, and not to settle for a physician identity. I think um, being a doctor is an incredible um, opportunity. It's been a, an incredible gift. And um, I think for too many of us, we wrap too much up, uh, too much of our identity into being a physician. And there are so many other opportunities and identities out there that we can wear simultaneous to being a physician. And I think I would just encourage myself to be more open to all of those other opportunities. Welcome to the Real Estate Mogul MD Podcast. Thanks for tuning in and taking control of your financial future. This is a show where we not only motivate and inspire, we give you actionable real world experience to help you live life by design. You'll hear journeys and stories from other physicians, investors, coaches, consultants, and entrepreneurs. And now, here's your host, Brett Riggins. Today's guest is a gastroenterologist, a husband, a father, a podcaster, and a physician coach at Better Physician Life Coaching. He coaches physicians on creating a work-life balance. Man, that, that idea just sounds great. I know it. Goal setting, stress management, reducing overwhelm, and feeling present at home and less annoyed at work. So many times, I know even for myself, something happens at work, I drag it in and the family feels it. Something happens at home and I can drag it in uh, and work feels it. So uh, great conversation here today. And there's a moment uh, where today's guest actually shares the breakdown and the burnout. Uh, but today, his goal is to help physicians stop feeling trapped in medicine so that they can finally enjoy the life, the life they worked so hard to build. From uh, from burnout to, to passion and entrepreneurship and now lifting up others, lifting up your medical career and lifting up your life. What a beautiful balance this is. Everybody, please welcome Dr. Michael Hirsch to the show. Michael, here we are. Welcome to the show, man. How does it feel to be Michael today? It feels pretty great. And first and foremost, thank you so much for inviting me. And I'm really excited to be here chatting with you today. That's amazing. And before we came on, I was I was just telling Michael that uh, it's so funny that it feels like so often I go to record and I record. I've got a little home studio here and the knee, the neighbors start blowing their leaves or they start the lawnmowers come through and need to mow the lawn. It's like, my goodness, it's like perfect timing every time. But you mentioned right before we got started, a great resource that some of the listeners may be interested in. Um, it's crisp.io, K-R-I-S-P.io. And is a, a free, a free platform. You see, I see there's some ways to pay for it, but it's basically like a gate, a noise gate where it's, it's, a compressor or a gate or something it's backing out the noise and right when you started you were like here i start clapping my hands and i couldn't hear anything and what a great what a great resource too because if you a lot of people these days are having uh meetings from home doing podcasts and our families are running around and it helps right a hundred percent. Yeah. These are things that uh, non-podcasters might not think about, but yeah, background noise can be such a big thing. And, um, and you get 90 minutes free and this is not, you know, there's uh, not a sponsorship or anything right. like that. I get nothing out of people using this, but it's just a background filter. And so people can be stomping around, knocking, like you mentioned, I was clapping my hands and it just filters out all the background noise. So you just get to hear my voice. Nice, nice. In that voice, we are hearing loud and clear. Thank you so much for sharing that with us here today, Michael. Let's tell a little bit about to the listeners about who who's Michael and what do you do? Thank you again so much. So yeah, so I am a uh, full-time practicing gastroenterologist. I'm also a husband and a dad, and I am the CEO and founder of Better Physician Life Coaching, where I help physicians kind of feel more present at home and less annoyed at work and sort of work through some of the balance issues that we all are always confronted with as we are kind of wearing all of the many hats that we wear, like I was just mentioning. And uh, so, yeah, so that's a little bit about me. I am about a little over 15 years out of training. Uh, I am a hospital employed gastroenterologist and I work in the uh, suburbs of Chicago. 
Nice. Well, congratulations. Almost in the 15 year. Congratulations on the family as well, too. And balancing that is always like a juggling act. And, you know, just those little pieces of how we drag these things home and how sometimes home drags into work and and that balance um, that we search for is a tough place to be. But congratulations. You're in the hospital now as an employee. So we talked a little bit about this on um, maybe this path, you, like so many physicians lead into this burnout path. And I'm always just wondering as an outsider, hey, how much of this is is kind of driven by that financial path or that path to freedom, whether it's, whether it's time freedom, uh, financial freedom, uh, geographical freedom, how much of that is, is the fuel for this burnout? What is your experience with that so far? Yeah, I think uh, physician burnout is such a complex issue. I think for many physicians, we kind of uh, signed up for a career before. Well, first of all, before we really genuinely knew what was involved with the work that we were signing up for. Um, and then uh, in addition to that, I, I think especially for me, so I started medical school 25 years ago. And medicine looked completely different. So the agreement that I thought I was signing when I enrolled in medical school, that's changed tremendously. Um, it changed over the years that I was in my training, and it's changed even more since I've been out of training and working as an attending. And so I think there's that piece of it where the, the job that we thought we were signing up for doesn't look quite exactly like we thought it was going to. And then absolutely, I think that there is um, this piece where maybe some of us, myself included, went into medicine thinking like, here's a job where I can be in control, where I'm going to be the boss. And then you get into it and you realize, well, actually, that's not the case. There are lots of other cooks in this kitchen. And so I, I think that all of these play a role in burnout. And and certainly for me, my story does involve um, the quest for financial independence. I think as I was kind of moving through my medical career and wondering if this was something I could do for the rest of my life, I found the financial independence retirement early movement. And um I kind of went just head first, really kind of plowed into, you know, how can I pursue financial independence? And honestly, if I'm being honest, um, my drive that has, you know, served me so well throughout my life, when I put it into financial independence and trying to figure out how to make it happen as fast as possible, it ended up just accelerating my burnout even more. Mm. Um, and so that's a, a little bit of of kind of the background, and I'll I'll stop talking because I could go on for no no that's I I want to dig dig in just a little bit there too because I think it's important for for everybody to kind of like share that piece because yes yeah, it is a complex burnout is very complex but there are a lot of similarities whether it's in the symptoms or the uh, causes there may be some similarities there so what was that that truth that like, point where it was like, okay, you know, you said it was during that fire, you know, that uh, fire piece, right? That retire early piece that you noticed this. So what were some of the symptoms that led you to uh, this cause? And what was your actual cause for burnout? Yeah. So, you know, I think probably the burnout existed as I was leaving my training and, and, and entering into my job. And I think the excitement of becoming an attending, I was able to kind of push it all to the side and just really focus on my work. And I think I got busy very quickly and I learned how to be a very busy, busy attending gastroenterologist. Um, and, and that started to take its toll. You know, they would ask us just, you know, can you just see one more patient? Can you just do one more procedure? Um, can you join this committee? Can you do all of these things? And as a, a young attending, there's a tendency to just say yes to everything. 
And it serves you well, right? We learn early in our medical careers when you say yes, you say or saying yes to opportunities. And so I was quickly welcomed on to a lot of the high level committees in my medical system. And it was great. I loved the leadership roles. Um, but I was waking up super early in the morning for meetings and then doing my clinical work all day and then doing some additional patient care related stuff and getting home super late at night. And that took its toll. And then, um, you know, I would say about 10 years into my practice, I was involved in a medical malpractice litigation suit that uh, really was like kerosene on my burnout flame that, um, you know, eventually went away um, and the repercussions of it don't go away. Any physician that has been through this and many of us have uh, medical malpractice uh, afflicts at least one in seven practicing physicians. And it's something that none of us really talk about. And so all of these were kind of the underlying burnout that drove me to find fire, financial independence, retirement early. And then the more I was working so that I could achieve fire and escape medicine, just the more it amplified the burnout. And, and I think burnout looks different for all physicians. For me, it was just dreading going into work. Um, when I was at work, I just really didn't want to be there. I was really unpleasant to be around. It was really difficult to interact with me. Um, and, and then COVID happened. Mm. Oh, wow. Right. So, so there's probably a quite a few uh, people in the hospital. There's like, oh, great. Here comes Michael. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Oh, man. But no, I actually hear that. I hear that often, Michael, that piece of just dreading go to work, dreading going to work, dreading going to work. Um, and it gets so much deeper. And there is some other things like that malpractice thing is huge. Like that can take a huge emotional toll on you. Uh, and then COVID. So these things stacked up. The three of those things are massive. And in the midst of that, you know, you, you've mentioned fire a couple of times. And what was your path? Like, um, I don't know if they, uh, I've not been inside of that community yet, but I hear a lot about it. Is there something that like a direction they say to go, or do they just kind of like plant the seed and you go your own direction? What was your direction for financial independence? Yeah. And, you know, I think that looks different for different physicians and also taking into account their, you know, ability to tolerate risk. Um, for me, it was mostly about, you know, controlling my savings rate and my spending and, and, and just investments in general, um, mostly in the stock market. But there are not specific ways that, you know, physicians are, you know, are told head in one path versus another. Certainly a lot of physicians explore real estate as another way of achieving financial independence and then entrepreneurship. Um, ended up becoming another way of, that I kind of started to explore in, on a path toward financial independence. Yeah, I love it. So stock market, and uh, you mentioned real estate, and then entrepreneurship. But before you mentioned all of that, you said uh, risk tolerance. Yes. Um, and physicians are known for being what what's it called risk adverse. So I'm trained to do my job and keep everybody safe. And I don't want to take any risks doing that. So now how do I take that personality trait and pick it up and put it into uh, most of the time, uh, a field where risk is rewarded, right? More risk, more return. Obviously, we want to focus on capital preservation and different points of our investing careers. Uh, field different driving paths. Uh, but on this idea of risk adverse, what was it about real estate? Now, I know you don't have any personal experience in real estate. I'm assuming you've probably rent, you may own your own um, homestead. Uh, you may rent your homestead. E either way, what was it about real estate that kind of stood out to you as a potential investment? Yeah, I mean, I think it's um, it's talked a lot about in the physician communities as a way of um, kind of just generating passive income. Um, it's a way of um, of building equity and net worth and a way that a lot of times, you know, the investment can end up paying for itself. So I know there are some physicians out there that say buy a building 
with the goal that that building is their kids' college education, right? So they mm. buy the building, they allow the tenants of that building to pay down the mortgage, and then when their kids are ready for college, they sell the building and they have the cash available to pay for college. So um, I, I've, I've heard of lots of different ways of, of utilizing real estate. Um, you know, it wasn't exactly the path that I ended up taking, but I, you know, I can definitely see that there are, you know, there's a lot of potential there. And I, I have a lot of friends that this has been their main way that they have, have kind of forged a path towards financial independence. And being risk adverse, what were some of the hurdles that you saw maybe kept you from, uh, continuing those water cooler conversations, uh, at the hospital? Yeah, and and I think this does speak a little bit to um, my the journey that I've had, which was I think as physicians we have a ton of limiting beliefs. So you know there is that knowledge base that holds us back. So for me, uh, this was something that I you know real estate wasn't something I felt particularly comfortable with. I didn't know a ton about it, and there was this limiting belief that like oh well this isn't for me. And I think that that had been kind of a, a, a pretty big piece of my just general, like how I thought through things um, until I found physician coaching in, in 2020, when I started to be able to examine what are those limiting beliefs? What are the things that are holding me back? And, and I think if, you know, if we're looking back on that time where I'm looking at financial independence and kind of exploring what are my options, that would have been, you know, a big piece for me was thinking like, oh, this sounds complicated and I'm not sure I can figure it out. And what I have learned over the last four or five years as I have started tackling these limiting beliefs is that physicians are really smart. Um, we are the type of people who, if there is something that we want to learn, we can figure it out. And I think giving ourselves the opportunity to explore the things that we're interested in without with, you know, by with releasing the identities that are holding us back, um, there's so much that we can do. The conditioning, and I talk about this a lot, the conditioning, even prior to uh, the self-realization point um, that happens when you're able to reflect and catch these moments where, okay, what is it that's causing this? What is, what's keeping me from this? What's the story that I'm telling myself that's, that's really leading me down the same path over and over and over again? But this path, I think you said that very well, and that limiting belief uh, was keeping you, hey, this is not for me right? This real estate is not for me. So it really didn't allow you to apply yourself and your ability to learn. Yes, because physicians are amazing learners and you do that for so long and you should continue to do that. And I always say, hey, pick that up. Just like you're saying, pick that up, put that in something you're passionate about. Because that's, if you can align what you're passionate about with something that makes a ton of money and it doesn't require your time to make that money, Come on with it. Then we get this. Then, then now we're like the uh, the Barnum and Brothers. Is that the that the, the circus where I've got juggling all over and I'm smiling and making everybody else smile, doing my job, doing my passion at the same time, creating this path to allow me to do things that I want, not that I need, right? And that's that where we can when uh, physicians can practice medicine the way that they want to, not because they need to, because of maybe lifestyle creep or uh, just keeping up with the partners. Maybe you've got your own practice. Uh, it's just a whole different world. Then comes in your entrepreneurial path. Now you've got this platform, Better Physician Life. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Better Physician Life, Physician Coaching, right? Uh, tell us a little bit about that platform. And that's your entrepreneur piece, right? That's your passion piece. That's exactly right. And and so, you know, we were just on the heels of talking about limiting beliefs. And this was another huge one for me. I'm a physician. I'm not an entrepreneur, right? These are, this is just not what a good that's doctor a, That's is. a limiting belief right there. A hundred percent, right? Yeah. And it was um, my experience as being the recipient of physician coaching, signing up for a coaching program where I was like, look, I am miserable. I don't know how much longer I can do this for. Something needs to change. And what is the thing that needs to change? And it turned out the thing that needed to change was me, except I had this belief that I couldn't change, 
right? Yeah. And so that was the my journey with physician coaching. And what I loved about my journey was I learned so much about how I was holding myself back. There were all of these interests that I had, all of these things that I wanted to do, and I really wasn't allowing myself to do any of them. And so um, it was such a powerful journey for me. I decided, look, I'm, I, I want to learn more about coaching. And so I signed up for a coach certification program. I noticed that there, most of the physician coaches out there were female physicians. And I just thought, you know, maybe there should just be some more male physicians out there talking about the power of this work. And what ended up happening is I created a business, um, which has really provided me so much fulfillment um, because, you know, physicians are, there's so many physicians are turning away from medicine. So many physicians think that they will be happier when they leave clinical medicine. And the truth is we need doctors. As I mentioned, I am still a full-time practicing gastroenterologist. And each time I coach a physician who thinks that their only path is to leave medicine and they decide to stay because the things that were making them so unhappy in medicine start to fade away. Um, not only do I help that one doctor, but I help every single patient that that physician then goes on to, to treat moving forward. And so for me, this has been an incredible path because not only have I kind of turned these limiting beliefs on their head, I've actually it proven to myself in the process that we can do anything that we set our minds to. Um, and that's just such a huge, that's a 180 from kind of where I was when I started this journey. That's amazing. And not only are you helping that that doctor, that physician um, and their patients, but their the doctor's family, the physician's family, the patient's family. Like there's, it's so, there's so many people around that idea of of helping when you're not just helping one person. There's so many people uh, in addition to that, in this uh, platform that you have now, tell me a little bit about your experience as an entrepreneur in this platform being now, let's talk a little bit about the business, right? You've created this thing, not necessarily accidentally. You've just created the opportunity to do this. Now we're talking about, uh, you know, P and L's and potentially even resources and assets and websites and marketing. Where are you at with that? Yeah. Honestly, it's been so fun. Um, you know, it, it's so different um, than the journey to become a, a physician. Um, and so many of the skills that we learn in our medical training and our medical practices are applicable. So, mm -hmm. you know, as we were talking about when we were talking about, you know, we as physicians are smart and we can figure things out. I didn't know how to create a website. I didn't know how to market myself. I didn't know how to use social media as a platform to help people to find me. And all of these things have been skills that I've been developing over the last four years. And, and the point is, is that this is all very learnable. I think the thing that holds doctors back is um, we as physicians have this tremendous fear of failure. And so it's so often that we think about doing something and then get nervous about, well, what if it doesn't work? Mm -hmm. And the truth is, failure is a very important part of entrepreneurship. I have done so many things that have not worked. And the key is to use those obstacles and those points where things didn't turn out as just lights along the path that show you exactly the way that you need to go. And so that is exactly has been my entrepreneurial journey. And and I and I say it in the present tense because it's still going right as as I am growing my business and figuring out what are the things that physicians want? What are the resources that they need? What are they what are we trying to figure out collectively and individually? My business is changing and growing alongside of it. And it's been so fun. I recently put together this resource for doctors called What's Next? And the goal there is so many physicians get through their training and get to the point where I was at when I found physician coaching, where it's like, okay, I'm I'm here, I'm doing this thing every single day. Is is this it? And we never really <laughs> give there, ourselves an opportunity. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, okay, I'm here. Now what? 
And yeah. so I wanted to create this resource that allowed physicians to start thinking through, okay, like, what do I want to see in my life? So this is like that inter that interview question that nobody wants to get asked, like, where do you see yourself in 10 years or 20 years? Mm -hmm. But it's for yourself, right? It's a question where when, you know, you don't have to share it with anybody, but when you picture yourself in 5, 10, 15, 20 years, you know, um, where do you want to be? What do you want your life to look like? What are your hopes? What are your dreams? And so it's a free resource on my website where doctors can go and they can work through this on their own. Um, and I have found this work to be incredibly helpful. I've done it myself and it has really helped to direct my path so that I could help figure out kind of where do I want my life to go? Yeah. Having that uh, fear of failure, again, that risk adverse personality, um, and it made me think of, I think it was the Wayne Gretzky quote. I'm sure a lot of people have heard this. You will miss every shot that you don't take, right? If you don't take that shot. And it made me think of my son. He got to a point um, where he just wouldn't play a game. Like he would analyze the probability of him winning. And if he didn't feel that probability was like 100%, he's like, nah, I'm good. I'm not playing. Uh, but that that idea of you will miss every shot that you don't take, and you mentioned it, you, failure is a is a part of being an entrepreneur, um, and it is it is a part of being an investor, right? And the idea that you have to fail fast, keep your feedback loop tight, and it gives you the ability to make these little pivots along the way and improve yourself constantly. You've got to be willing to improve yourself. You've got to be willing to be critical of your processes, your procedures. You've got to find your purpose. You mentioned that. The idea of failing uh, as a key role of being an entrepreneur, what was one of the biggest failures that you made on your way? Um, it, it never ends. You're right. It, we will always be failing. Uh, what's been the biggest failure for you so far becoming an entrepreneur? Yeah. So, you know, and, and it's interesting, right? Because I, I use the word failure and I don't even think of these as failures anymore, right? I just mm -hmm. think of these as again, like steps along the path of things that I've tried and that maybe I would go back to at a certain point, but maybe they just, it wasn't the right time. So um, as I mentioned, um, one of my goals in doing this was to create a, um, a coaching community, a male physician coaching community where male physicians could get together and talk about some of the issues that are addressing us on a regular basis. And I piloted that program for my current uh, male physician coaching clients in the spring. And it was great. I actually really enjoyed it. And, you know, I, I didn't really sense the full buy-in. I didn't really get that it was something that was high on the list of things that people needed right then and there. And so I trialed it for, I think, four months. And then I was like, you know, I'm going to push the pause button on this. Um, and I loved the experience and it wasn't a success and I might go back to it at some point when I kind of figure out what the needs are. Um, and so that's just one example off the top of my head. Yeah. Yeah. And failure to me, failure is a word that we use in this particular instance, but failure only happens if you give up. If you keep going, keep driving, failure doesn't exist. But it makes me think on the way, the path of being an entrepreneur, we have these things. Um, and I, I always heard the analogy of taking these little sniper shots, like that group, building that community. And to me, I'm, I'm hearing like the culture, like that culture has got to be so deep that people are driving, but then you're isolated by time and, and location. So it's a challenging sniper shot. But you take this sniper shot in a way where it's not costing you tens of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So you're taking that sniper shot. But if you take that little sniper shot and then all of a sudden you're getting some feedback, some movement, then you can, you know, bear down on this thing and put some money at it, go after it. But being consistent, you said that um, it's something that you may pick back up. And I, that's really important too. And as we go through a, as an entrepreneur, taking these little pivots, making sure that we're not picking up the next shiny object and trying to run with it, the next... Uh, not not that this is, but a lot of people will get that next little thing that they can go out and spend five thousand or ten thousand dollars on. They think it's going to be an easy button, right? Being consistent and persistent, staying focused, 
uh, staying true to your why, the passion that's driving you. And a lot of it, it comes down to making sure that you, you've got income coming in while you're doing this too. So maintaining that job, um, uh, still practicing medicine is huge too. If you could go back about 10 or say, no, let's go back, not quite 15 years. So we're not going all the way back that far, but say a little over 10 years with the knowledge that you have now, um, whether it's in the life balance world or being an entrepreneur, investing, um, if you could go back and, and set with that person who's just jumping into that uh, attending position, uh, what would you tell them? Yeah, this is a great question. Um, you know, I think I would have so much advice for that person, and I'm not sure I would have been ready to hear any of it. <laughs> Because the truth is, I wish that I could transport back to me 10 years ago and be doing all of the things that I'm doing now, but 10 years younger. And the truth is, I wasn't ready for any of it. Because all of those, again, I don't want to call them failures, mistakes, things that I was doing that were setting me on my burnout path, um, led me to who I am today. Um, you know, I think if I was, if, if I was willing to hear these myself today without rolling my eyes 10 years ago, I probably would be telling myself to explore my interests more, to take more risks and not to settle for a physician identity. I think, um, being a doctor is an incredible, um, opportunity. It's been a, an incredible gift. And um, I think for too many of us, we wrap too much up, uh, too much of our identity into being a physician. And there are so many other opportunities and identities out there that we can wear simultaneous to being a physician. And I think I would just encourage myself to be more open to all of those other opportunities, right? Like, so we've talked about so many of those things that I had told myself that I, I didn't know and I couldn't learn and I couldn't change. And I would just remind myself to be more open to all of those opportunities. Yes, you just go back and do the, the virtual slap. If you were talking to yourself, the virtual slap and say, Michael, this is for you. Michael, you can change. Open your eyes, man. You got it. I think I'm the same way. I, if I, in the world of real estate, the first time that, I, the uh, just that point where I realized that I could buy a house, I could borrow money, and then the tenant would pay rent and it pays the mortgage. And it was just like, boom, it just blew my mind up. And then for so long after that, I got so frustrated. Like, why didn't, why, what, why didn't I learn this in high school? But I didn't, it's like you're saying, I don't know that I was ready. I don't know that I am... Uh, I have become the person that I needed to be to handle that kind of information. And I know now, and I continue, just like being an entrepreneur, I'm, I'm continuing to sharpen, to fail fast, but being persistent and consistent and keep driving because it's, goals are not about these things in life. It's about who we become. And that ability to say that, hey, this is for me, that self-realization point that I can change and that you can help other people along the way. And just think about when we talked about this, Michael, that it's not just that person that you're helping. It's that person's family. It's that person's uh, down downline, downstream, their patients or their friends or their family that you're helping along the way. And the listeners can find more about you at betterphysicianlife.com, B-E-T-T-E-R, Physician Life, that's L-I-F-E dot com. Uh, connect with you, obviously you're on social media and all of that. But man, what a great conversation. Thank you so much for your time today, Michael. Really appreciate you having me. It's It's been a blast chatting with you and, and thank you so much again. Awesome. And to the listeners, as always, thank you for your time and your attention. Um, just like Michael is saying, uh, don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, there are other people that are going through similar things as you. Don't take it all the way to the point of, hey, is this a symptom? Is this a problem? Uh, just surround yourself with the right people. Michael had mentioned something that he uh, thought was a great idea, and it is. 
uh, finding this community of like-minded people, building this culture, aligning with people who share the same values will bring you so much joy and happiness in your life. Uh, it's really important, important and um, this is for you. And you can change. Plant the seed, make a difference. This is the Real Estate Mogul MD.